Oh, wow! That was an amazing face jump. Well, hi there. I'm here today with a monkey anole, which comes to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah. This is a glorious lizard. Let me just, let me begin there. I, I asked you guys a little while ago if you wanted me to cover this lizard or not, and I showed you a picture, and the overwhelming response was, yeah, we want to see that. And this is an amazing looking lizard. Uh, I have one big problem with it right up front, which is the name. It's a monkey anole. The only problem with that is it is neither a monkey nor an anole. Uh, these guys actually are their own family of lizards. They're part of the suborder Iguania, which does include the anoles, lizards, but it also includes well, lots of things. I mean, it includes the iguanas, it includes the chameleons, it includes the agamid lizards. It's a big group. These guys are not uh, as closely related to anoles as they are to other lizards. So this is not an anole. Um, but it, it does, the main, the main anole feature that it has is it has a dewlap. Uh, but actually there are a lot of agamids and iguanas and the anoles that all have dewlaps. So that's not really a reason to even begin to think it's an anole, but it is a stinking rad lizard. I love these things. They're native to South America mostly, though they have been introduced to Florida as well, so if you got very lucky you might find one in the wild in Florida, and just go ahead and catch it and keep it as a pet, because it's not supposed to be there. If you're considering buying one, well, Hopefully this video will help you decide if it is the right choice for you. These lizards are really cool. They're beautiful. Incredible colors and color changing ability like a chameleon. Actually, like a lot of their close relatives. Uh, but they do change color quite a bit. They've got this enormous tail. It's a little bit prehensile. And as far as I know, they don't drop it. I, I haven't seen any evidence that they do. Uh, and I'm sure they use it quite a bit as they move through the through plants. You can see the way, oh, look at that. I mean, a lot of times as they transfer between things, neither of their hind feet will be touching anything. And they make these amazing transitions, sort of like chameleons will. They've got feet like, kind of like a, a, a scraggly iguana, and definitely nothing like an anole, because they're not anoles. They don't have any of the toe pads or anything that an anole has, but I cannot get past the personality of these guys, the beauty of these guys. They're really awesome lizards. But are they a good pet lizard? And are they the right pet lizard for you? Overall, we give the non-monkey, non-anole a score of 2.6 out of 5, which should indicate to you that it's probably not a great choice unless you find one wild in Florida, then grab it and keep it. It's going to be pretty neat. And that score was based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. So let's start with handleability, shall we? When it comes to handleability, we give the not monkey, not an old a score of three out of five. This one here is actually outstanding. Uh, I love handling this thing. If all of them were as easy to handle as this particular individual, they'd probably be at like a four out of five, really only losing a point because they are small and fragile and could be easily injured by rough handling, say from a child or something. However, they can be kind of quick. Not super quick, but they'll try to get away from you. But it's a very manageable speed. They can climb a lot of Surfaces, they're not going to climb up glass or walls quite like uh, true anoles will or geckos, things with toe pads. These guys don't have them. But as I mentioned before, they are delicate, and so that's, that is a concern. I w they also can stress with excessive handling, so my recommendation would be to keep handling to a minimum with these guys, sort of like with a chameleon. And you'll find as we talk about these, they've actually got a lot of similarities to chameleons uh, w with respect to care 
and handling, though they're nowhere near as grumpy as many chameleons can be. And if you're interested in chameleons, we've actually got several videos already on chameleons and more coming all the time. When it comes to care, we give the Not Monkey Not a Knoll a score of 3 out of 5. One of the care requirements, basically daily care requirements, is going to be misting. It's possible that they might drink standing water, but generally speaking, like a lot of other arboreal lizards, they're going to primarily be lapping droplets of water off of leaves. That's the way that they're going to get water. And so if you don't miss them regularly, they can die of dehydration pretty quickly. So that is a major care requirement they need all the time. It makes leaving them for extended periods of time difficult unless you've got a misting system that you can trust. They are going to need insect feeders. So make sure you have those available most of the time. And, and always dust those insect feeders with calcium and vitamin supplements, you know, at least once a week maybe a little bit more. They're going to need both heat and UVB lighting, which means they need both basking bulbs and the kind of expensive UV bulbs. They'll need an enclosure, very much like the one that we built, our bioactive enclosure, but larger than that. Make sure it has good ventilation, because you are going to be misting regularly, and you want humidity to stay up, but you don't want it to get soggy in there. That can cause problems of its own. They'll also need a lot of places to climb. These are a lizard that really thrive in the sticks. They're just excellent climbers and so put lots of vines and plants and woody branches and things like that that they can climb on because they will do really well and they'll be extremely fun to watch. These guys though, like chameleons, don't seem to do very well with mistakes. And given that a lot of them are imports, one part of care is probably going to be taking them to the vet and having them treated for parasites, which are very common. Uh, and you've just got to be aware that, you know, that's, that's going to be part of the care requirement for almost any import lizard, which is a big part of why, for hardiness, we give these guys a score of 2 out of 5. Honestly, this is probably the reason, well, at least one of the reasons why I wouldn't recommend these to most people. Even under the best of circumstances, they're going to have a fairly short lifespan. These guys, like chameleons, are kind of a live fast, die young sort of a lizard. And most of them that are brought in as imports come in as fully grown adults who are who knows how old. And so even if you do a perfect job, they might only live a few months for you. You just don't know how long they've got left. It's definitely going to be a much better situation if you get a captive bred baby. Then you might have several years of enjoyment of a really cool lizard. They're also delicate because they're fairly small and, and fairly skinny lizards. So you definitely need to be careful not to ever crush them. And, and as I mentioned before, they're almost all imports that are available now. As I understand it, there are people that are working with them and producing a small number of captive bred babies. If you can get one of those, I totally recommend them. They're awesome. Almost all of them you find, especially if it's already an adult, almost certainly will be an import, in which case they're going to have parasites and they're just going to be prone to crashing. I mean, this is, this is something that a lot of imports experience, especially those that are short-lived anyway. They could just easily crash on you and like I said before, they don't tolerate mistakes well. So set things up perfectly before you get the lizard because if you get it home and then set it up, I mean, it just, it might crash by the time you get things right. For availability, we give them a score of two out of five. Even if you want an import, you're probably going to need to look online. Generally speaking, you're not gonna find them at pet shops unless you happen to live by Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, because they do have one, and it was the first one I'd ever seen in person. They're probably not gonna be at expos very often. Online is gonna be the place to find them, and if you're already looking online, and you're already waiting until you've got your enclosure set up, find, find these people who are breeding them because there are some of these people and they're working with a really cool lizard that's kind of unknown and you know about it. So get one from them. Don't support massive harvesting from the wild. Wild populations can't handle that. It's going to be a lizard that's only going to last a few months at best for you. That's assuming it doesn't crash. Get a captive bred baby or get one from the wild in Florida if you live there. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Not Monkey Not Anole a score of three out of five. The lizard itself is moderately expensive, even for an import. I and mean, not, not super duper expensive, but you know, crested gecko sort of money. 
and uh, this is a lizard that is much more likely to crash on you than a crested gecko. The enclosure also should be large and vertically oriented, and so that's expensive. Not super expensive, but expensive. Uh, you'll definitely need a good lid on that. They're going to need basking in UVB bulbs, so the heat lamps and the UV lamps, which are expensive. Lots of vines and things to climb on. Uh, there are some really cool artificial vines that are made by a few companies right now. We'll have links to all this stuff down in the description so you can check that out down there. They'll need a substrate that'll hold moisture, um, but not rot, which is very important. And, and a misting bottle or a misting system, depending on how involved you want to be with the misting. And you could try a water bowl, but generally speaking, I doubt they'll drink from it. These just aren't lizards that come down to puddles. These are lizards that drink droplets. And that is why overall we give the Not Monkey Not Manole a score of 2.6 out of 5. The same score as Iguanas, but for completely different reasons. <laughs> this is a very pleasant lizard that is hard to keep. The Iguana is a very unpleasant lizard that is very rel relatively easy to keep for a colossal lizard. Colossal angry room ninja. If you haven't seen that video you should check it out. If you get a well started captive bred baby because these guys hatch out pretty little and they can be difficult when they're newborns, but, you know, the breeders will know what they're doing. If you can get a well-started captive bred baby, these are awesome. It's, a, it's at least a very amazing, very unique display lizard. Otherwise, you know, I would just avoid them. Uh, I love them, right? Look at pictures of them all day. Uh, maybe find one in the wild in Florida. But the native populations can't handle over-harvesting of these guys. They're probably, as wild-caught adults, just going to die on you. Um, it's just not the way to go. Not yet. But if you are a breeder and have experience with other similar lizards, yeah, get some. Get them well-established. This one at Animal Ark, they've had it there for months, which is awesome. And nobody buys it because nobody knows what it is. But it, this is a, a now well-established individual. And if you are a breeder, see if they've still got this guy. Otherwise, you know, it's just not worth it because it is probably going to crash and die on you very soon at, you know, it'll last a few months probably at best. And so it's just not worth it. There are just too many other really cool things that make great pets. You don't need one, but look at pictures. As always, like and subscribe. Thank you again to our patrons at Patreon. Make sure to click the little bell so you can get notifications when other cool videos about rad lizards that make great pets and maybe those that don't but are still really cool and you want to know about them come available we hope to see you real soon as always like and subscribe sorry jason had to cue me i don't know what we do at the end of these videos how could there be a better name than the not monkey not an old oh, wow that was an amazing face jump i hadn't seen it make such a big jump all day La tortuga. Ow! These claws are actually fairly sharp when uh, used on your eyeball. As it turns out. You dork. Ah. Hey! Ah. It's a theme! Belly. <laughs> <laughs> Get uh -oh. in my belly! Hello! <laughs> okay. <laughs>